What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG Career Mode, it's episode number 18, uh, returning today on the back of the season opener where we made four new signings for our Swansea team, really just bench players for now as it can serve our small transfer budget, uh, Danny War coming in on a free transfer, Morgan Whitaker returning, Ravi Matondo coming back to South Wales and of course Yusuf and thanks to the comments in the last episode as well, uh, for those of you that watch Swedish football, Belgian football let me know that this guy basically is exactly what he looks like, a hard work working running effort machine and that is exactly my sort of player so I appreciate the comments guys good to get some info on this guy and uh, I like this comment too Moses Odger 2.0 Yep, real ones know all about Moses Odger. So if you look at the budget right now, just over £23 million. Again, you've got to remember the wage budget gets included in that as well. So there's not much to work with. But I did see this comment uh, from Mr. Gav196 uh, recommending me Jamal Lewis as a backup left back. And this actually makes a lot of sense because... He showed promise at Norwich, didn't really work out at Newcastle, but instead of getting him on the cheap, we'll get him on the free. Released by the Magpies in the summer, no real surprises there. But at 27 years old, 74 rated, he could still do a job as a backup, if not a starter in this team. And a freebie, you know I'm going to love that. So that's a great suggestion, it'll be my first signing today. I think it's safe to say this guy's never going to hit the heights he once showed at Norwich, but it's nice to see after a really turbulent time at St. James's, he's finding his feet once again out on loan at Watford right now at Vicarage Road, but in the save, coming in on a five-year deal on a free transfer. Welcome to the Swansea.com Stadium, Jamal Lewis. Yeah, I really like this man. We're playing Moneyball right now. Very limited budget, very low funds to work with, but at 27 years old, still getting a little bit better. And again, this signing suits us to a T. He's not going to start in this team ahead of Jordan Boz, who was phenomenal last year, but he's still going to get, again, a little bit better. I'm surprised that the stamina is so low because in his youth, this guy was known for being a distance runner. But even so, still a really solid left back and it gives us good minutes in rotation in this team. And so as we get to the first of the month, we will now have... A bid for Harry Darling from Brighton. Interesting, 5.5 mil, but one of our better center halves from last season. So instead, we're going to turn this one down. Um, yeah, the first of the month means we will have our scouting reports, our first three of the new season. So oh, that's annoying. I want this guy. Let's see what we've got. Well, don't forget, from Wales and Greece this season, we're looking for a type for the first time in the save. That's defense-minded players. Mark Flynn could be all right with a 5 for 8. Certainly not going to be a centre-half in this team. Uh, from Greece, a a anyone here? Possibly Papadopoulos, but again, the height is a little bit concerning. We're finding players under six foot right now until we find one, but sadly not great potential. So not, not a great start so far. And again, this, this is why I prefer not to specify a type. Normally, I find better results without one. Oh, but from the Netherlands, we might have a couple of players here. Who, uh, who look really, really solid. Oh, that's a tease. You know when you see a player with a high overall, but the potential just doesn't match up right there. But still a couple of good players here. Jos Sanders, uh, Delu, who's six foot four to be fair, but a, a goalkeeper, not a centre-half. And uh, this lad, Simon DeVray, who I might just give a scholarship to straight off the bat. So just a one player making it from the first month, but obviously eight more to go. So plenty of time. Uh, our academy full to the brim right now. I'm still really keen on this Ivorian. Bubakar Bangura, he looks absolutely solid. 66 overall already at just 16. And the potential range now seems set at 89 and 94, meaning that potential to be special. It's just such a shame that in this year's CM, I don't know whether you guys are the same as me. In fact, comment down below. Below. Comment down below today, guys. What's the position where you find the best gems in when you're doing your use scouting? Because for me, it's always goalkeepers and CAMs, but I can't find a full pack to save my life. Oh, and an offer to become the next Mike Bassett, but unfortunately going to turn it down. I don't know, international management just hasn't really appealed to me in, in this year's career mode, like it has done in, uh, in previous years, so for now... I'll turn that down. But as we approach the first game of the season, that's away at West Ham. Uh, we're going to see as the big comes in for the captain. But of course, we're going to turn this one down from the uh, from the blades. We're going to see if we've got any money added to our budget after the season ticket money has just come in. And not really. It's 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 24 mil. So yeah, we'll, we'll get about an extra mil, but not 
not much to work with. I think we'll play the first game of the season away at West Ham in London, and then we'll look at our team, what we need, and then possibly make new signings yeah, after that. So yeah, first game of the season, West Ham away. Last year, of course, had a turbulent run to end the season, where we only won one of our final 13 games, I think it was. To start the season off, we want a really healthy beginning, and a victory on the opening day away in the capital would be the perfect start. First game, it's West Ham away. James controls, back to Barzu. Oh, what a ball! Oh, what a ball! But is a flag up? No, it's not. Flag stays down. And Josh Ginnelly with the opening goal. What a cross that was. Oh, my goodness. You know, we brought this guy in. I said he looked like an absolute baller. Five clean sheets in 15. That's averaging one in every three. That speaks for itself. But also, he did get three assists in 15 as well. And he's just got one on the opening. That's one of the best crosses I've played in this year's FC. That was right on the money. God, I'm a huge fan of Jordan Boz, man. He's a, he's a baller, honestly. I don't know whether he'll become just as influential as uh, Tim Cahill was to the, uh, to the Socceroos. But um, he's certainly influential to this Swansea team, no doubt. He's amazing. He's amazing. So amazing. And still trying to close out this one goal lead to the break. Can't do so. Tammy Abraham slid through. And finesses into the bottom corner. 1-1. One, one. I'm having PTSD to last season with all those draws. You know, setting that new Premier League record of 18. Let me say that again. 18 in a single season. It's like when you're watching Final Score with a video printer. And like the number seems a bit far-fetched. And they actually put the, uh, the word in brackets. <laughs> 18 in a season. That's ludicrous. Oh no, come on. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Yeah, winning Harry. And... Man, tackling is just so weak, isn't it? Like, you'll, you'll make the tackle, but in this year's FC, I've never played an FC where tackling is as weak as this. The amount of stand tackles you'll make that will still go back to the forward, it's, it's infuriating. Oh, Laird has now just gone down in pain as well after a crunching tackle. This is all we need, man. It was, it was going so well, and now it's going to end in, uh, in disaster. An, inj an injury for Ethan to go alongside losing a game from a winning position. Yeah, we made five new signings, but they're average and they're basic. <laughs> they're not superstars, man. We're still going to be one of the weakest teams in the division. And if we have to survive through 18 draws again, then I would take it. Because we won't be able to do much better than that. How bad is that injury for Ethan? Ah, oh, man. The curse of the broken toe, man. The most common injury I get, so... Laird done until around mid-November time, and we, ha we haven't got a backup right back. We know that Yusuf and Brownhill can fill in there, but we haven't even got like a proper backup right back to replace him with. Well, to be fair, this is why I was converting Brownhill to right back, just in case I needed him to step in there. Josh Key is gone, which means that uh, Brownhill now is going to become, with Ethan Laird's injury, probably a, a starting right back for now. Because he's got the long throw trait as well. I quite like that with him being down the flank. So, yeah, I'm going to convert Brownell to an official RB. And whilst he's not really got the pace, he does have solid defensive stats. His aggression is high as well. And he could, he could still do a job there as well with a very high stamina too. So, so Brownell now will be our right back with Laird down. But it does mean that a CDM... We, we've got Yusuf, who's, who's now come in. Of course, he'll be a starter there. Marchetti's back from his injury. I don't know how much better he's going to get now at 28 years old. I, I think we're going to need another CM. Oh, my God. This is, this, <laughs> this is a challenging second season in the Premier League. It's just gotten even tougher on match day one. Still, we wanted this save to be a challenge, and that's exactly what it has been so far. Following game, Everton away at Goodison for our first Premier League points of this season. And as a, a side that's destined to struggle, you never want to leave it too long before you put your first points on the board. Come on, you swans, let's get it here. Great first start so far, but as things stand, set for our first point of the season, if not points, plural. But this might be the opener, and it is... Can't be mad when this guy is the back of the net, though, can you? I mean, Deli Ali, for all he's been through, even if he scores against me, I'm not going to be mad. We'll, we'll always love Deli Ali, man. Oh, what a ball, what a ball. Anyone that fought for our second year in the Premier League would be uh, knocking on the door of Champions League place. Think again. Uh, no money to work with. My wonder kid has had all his potential sucked out of him like the monsters in Space Jam. And uh, we're also missing our, uh, our right back until mid-November at the earliest. So, uh, yeah, 
It's gonna, it's gonna be another season similar to last year where survival is definitely a good season. Winning Kanunum, and forward we go. Ginnelly can lead the two man break. And it's the rifle feeds him down the right. Josh is obviously on side with the pace he's got, he's not gonna get caught. And in the end, offloads to Cam, who will make it 2 1. So perfect start to the second half. Lovely breakaway back in the game. We still need another to at least level this. Come on, Twanzu. Ali orchestrating like a prime Deli Ali would. Pops it back to Ahmed. Nice ball inside. Zalewski. Game over. Five goals conceded in one and a half games. So it's going to be back to back losses. This is a tough start of the season for him. Yeah, it's been a horrendous start to our second year in the Premier League. And you know, second season syndrome is a real thing. It might well be affecting the Swans because whilst last season we ended up surviving reasonably comfortably despite the end of season collapse. This year, well let's just say this, we don't get our first win in the first five or six games. I'm going to start to worry early doors. Poor star. Well one thing I definitely am going to do is give Josh Ginley a, uh, a contract extension. He's out of contract coming to the end of the season. And whilst we have got some amazing wingers out on loan including Tattoo Oliver who's grown 12 ratings in one month since going to Alaves. The, the loan system at times can be a bit broken. You know, players seem to hit a, uh, a really big spike as soon as they agree a, uh, a loan deal. But uh, Josh, Josh Ginnelly, to be fair, one goal and one assist in the first two games. He's definitely bought himself at least another two years, I'd say. I, I love that as well. You know, when a player's not really doing well in their original position, a change of position sees a change of fortunes. I think that's brilliant, man. When things aren't working for you, you try something completely different and you find yourself a new role there as well. If anyone deserves the praise and the big pay increase as well, it's Josh Ginley, man. Fair play. He was literally on the fringes after like four or five months of me being at Swansea. Changed him into a winger. And he's holding down his own in a Premier League team. That's, that's impressive. And speaking of the, uh, the loan system where you can loan a player out and you'll see a very quick overall spike as you've seen for a few of these players here. I, I know some of you suggested I should do that with AK-47 because it's not right, to be honest, that he's had all his potential sucked out of him. But... I don't know, man. I just, I'm not really, I don't know how to explain it. Like, there's nothing wrong with doing, absolutely. And in a case like this, it's probably justifiable. To me, I, I think I'm just going to keep him here and just hope and pray he'll restore some potential like a certain short king did in my Luton Town career. Right, following game, Watford away, Vicarage Road, Carabao Cup second round. And honestly, these are the games I call them gimmies, but I would not be one bit surprised if we suffer a cup set here tonight at Vicarage Road. Come on, you swans. I'm actually really pleased at Watford came up because do you remember in season one when we had them in the playoff semis? I was like, ah, oh, yeah, we should be able to brush them aside, really. And in the end, we were we were very close to going out to them. They were they were really solid. So kind of nice to see them finally get it right as uh, Emir Davis whips in a lovely delivery. And, oh, what a save! You know, I see some comments saying, Doxy Boy, you got to change Emir Davis's position, man, because he's a he's a right back, not a CAM. One of the cases of those accounting players coming out. In clearly a wrong position, got him playing there, and well, pro start, almost an amazing assist. Go on, Marchetti, well done. And Jamal to Cullen, great chance for a breakaway. Feeds it, oh, great touch by Jamal, and even his age. Oh, it's really well done. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Always believing. Loving the pieces, man. Absolutely love him. Oh, come on, don't throw it away right before the break. Please, if you don't mind. Guys, please. Man. Cannot defend to save my life. Ooh, oh, surely. Liam around Ryan. To get his second of the game. And we shouldn't throw away from here. Second lead of the night. And Swansea are oh, back in front. Come on. Not from the Premier League now, but we're still considered a better team. And Jamal Lewis! Not going to show respect or will he? Yes, he will indeed. I thought it was going to be the, uh, the late goal celebration where he can't do any celebration. So, but no, show respect. First start, first goal for the new Swan and the former Hornet on loan. As that will wrap it up. What for Mummy Premier League side now? We're still a better team. 
with more quality as well. And that's why while we know we're going to struggle this season, there are a couple of teams that I would say we've got more quality down and should be able to finish above. This is one of them. Put us in half for the next round. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the teams that are in the Premier League alongside us, we'll quickly do a draw here for the, uh, for the third round of the League Cup, where we'll be taking on... Middlesbrough, Michael Carrick's side, still in the championship uh, home this season. If you look at some of the teams that are in the Premier League alongside us, yeah, diabolical start. You'd say Watford is still weaker than us. I'd say Luton would still be considered weaker than us as well. And maybe no one else, but even so, we should be able to finish above them. And I'd definitely say if we get on a get on a run at some point, like we did last year in mid-season, that might be enough for us to pull away. Right, so we've got what we've got now, 23 mil in the budget. Deadline day right around the corner. We've, we've, we've definitely got to make a new signing or two because still I would say this team is not quite there yet. We'll, uh, we'll, play, we'll play the following game against Leeds and then look to reinvest the money we've got. And I would say probably a new DM and maybe a new AM as well. So second half off and underway. Still dead up to nil nil. Nothing really going on in the first half. Right now in a game we need some creativity. It seems like AK's not just lost his potential but that as well. Hasn't been able to uh, to do much when the ball's been at his feet. As we're still deadlocked here, but Jordan's done well to get away and find Dan James. And there is the rifle. Kanunen just couldn't get a shot away. And Leeds will clear. I still back him, man. I still I still back him. I, I think we are going to need to sign a new playmaker for this year, knowing his potential's dropped off completely. But I still believe he's got a place to play in this team. Corner, Swansea, Kanunen. Floats one in, headed away. James. Ginley. Yeah, no! Sign in. Oh, I thought he went in. Just couldn't squeeze it home from the tight angle. So close. Hmm, it's going to be a Swansea special. Draw. Goalless failed to score. First clean sheet of the season, but no wins in three and one point taken for a possible nine. Okay, deadline day is here. Not much to work with. We gotta spend some money and sign someone. So as deadline day is here again, 23 mil in the budget. I I would say personally, looking at the side right now, we love AK. Don't get me wrong, but no goals or assists in his first three. Maybe just maybe he should be more of a bench player for this season now that all his potential has been sucked out of him. And possibly, again, a, a new right-back or, uh, or CDM. Mainly due to Marquette's injury problems last season. And we need a long-term success for Grimes. Now 30 as well. There, there's a few names on the shortlist that really do intrigue me. Um, but I think one player that actually suit us really well is a player that was part of a relegated team last year. And that is with Burnley. You'll know who I'm talking about right now. Moving on from Aston Villa, Aaron Ramsey. I don't think I've ever bought him before, but whilst he is listed as an LM, with the stats he's got to me, he seems like more of a pure playmaker. You know, CAM in that spot right behind Cameron Archer. I think he'd be really solid there. And again, because they were relegated last year, Burnley, he'll want to be back in the top tier with a chance to play for the English national team as well. Should be available on a cheap-ish deal. I think this deal makes brilliant sense. Yeah, I mean, he's got a long way to go in his career, don't get me wrong. But he showed some promise when he was out on loan from Aston Villa. And then joining Burnley on a, uh, on a permanent deal. Now that they have been relegated, well, like I said, he should be available on a cheap-ish deal. And for valuation, 9.5 mil, that could be an absolute steal. We'll take that. A five-year deal on 26 grand a week and Aaron Ramsey is in. Maybe he won't hit the heights that the Welsh Aaron Ramsey did. Of course, Cardiff Academy graduate still has a long way to go in his young career. And I'd love to see him and his brother, Jacob, right now at Aston Villa, linking up at some point together in the same team. Maybe they will here with Swansea. Aaron in, though, and again on a five-year deal for 9.5 mil. This is the sort of deal we were talking about, man. We haven't got unlimited funds. We've got to make sure we spend our pennies wisely. We want those budget it buys the Comprusby bargains and Aaron definitely can. Again, to me, he looks like more of a CAM than an LM. I might possibly get that defensive work right up from medium to high first and then change him to CAM, but that is definitely where we'll be playing in this team. So I think for now, I'll keep him on the support midfield and development plan just to get a high defensive work rate because you know that's integral to me and then I'll change the CAM directly afterwards. So down to 12 million, which means that we probably... Won't be able to sign anyone apart from maybe a squad player. 
in the final late. We'll see if any deals or bids come in, I should say, for some of our, uh, our squad players, but I, d I doubt it. And even if we do, we're not going to be able to raise that much money. We said that earlier in the uh, in the window. You know, we were selling the likes of Kuharevich and Josh Tymon and Josh Key, but we were only getting like a million apiece, which obviously in one day football is very little. Well, there is a bit of a cam, and it's a massive one as well from the Bees. Possibly looking out for their successor for uh, for Tony once he eventually moves on. Of course, he's still not in the game at the moment for those curious Ivan Tony. Still hasn't been added into the game and into the database yet. But unfortunately, Thomas, he's uh, he's not going to you. He's staying right here. He's we can't lose Archer, man. He's way too important. So into the final two hours, which of course means there's not enough time for deals to get completed. I, I do quite like the hours going down one by one. But I've mentioned before, I wish to. Deals wouldn't take so long to get completed because you can do all your business within the same second, basically. But AI clubs need like five hours or at least four minimum to complete deals. It's way too long. But I'm going to make a squad sign and I've had this guy on my shortlist since the beginning of season one. I did see some comments right at the start of the save saying this guy wouldn't be a bad pickup just for the squad. And as a budget buy, squad player, reasonably versatile, he'll do an okay job, I'd say. Championship, Terriers, Huddersfield Town, Sorba Thomas, let's bring him in. Yeah, this guy's not really going to do much for us, but add a little bit of squad depth, which, again, is all we could really ask. And for absolutely not. I don't care how old Jamal Lowe is, man. He'll be staying here until he retires. We love him to pieces. 2.3 mil, though. And uh, we'll take that for a uh, for a squad player in full Welsh international. We really are building a team of misfits here, aren't we? But we'll take another one on a cut price deal. Silver Thomas signs a five-year contract as he goes from non-league to the Premier League. You got from Boreham Wood to Huddersfield, now to Swansea. And the English-born Welsh international is in. And again, as a squad player, he'll do a decent job. I was thinking about him at right back with a pace he's got going forward really solid. His defensive stats aren't terrible either, so could possibly do a job there at right back if required or simply on that right-hand side. Either way, he'll, uh, he'll do a job in the squad. That's exactly what we were looking for on a cut price deal as the money ball experiment continues. And so, whilst there is a little bit of money remaining, we're going to call it a day for the new signings. That I mean, it's seven for the season, three today, and our final one being the former Terrier. The top deals on deadline day. Wow, look at that. Newcastle clear out there. Uh, Bruno Grimoresh going to Real Madrid for 91.8 mil. Kimmich finally leaves Bayern after all those years. He's off to Napoli for 80.8 mil. And Botman goes to Liverpool for just shy of that exact same figure as well. So that'll do it for deadline day. That'll do it for the summer window. It's some money to work with in case we have some deals in January that come available for us. But for now... I'd, I'd say looking at the team, it's it's improved ever so slightly, but not by much. But the most important thing was that we didn't panic by and just sign one hopeful superstar to get us out of trouble. We continued to rise this club's ability ever so gradually, but also quite realistically as well. And that's what I really like too. It's still looking pretty solid for now. Even if it's not what you'd call a, uh, a star-studded lineup. In terms of realistic progression... I'd say we're doing a fantastic job with this team so far. And I'll do it for today's episode of the RTG Karuma, guys. So big fan of you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode. Let's look for our first Premier League win of the season after stumbling out of the blocks. And that Carabao Cup fourth round tie against Middlesbrough as well. Plus some more youth scouting too very soon.